Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all keeping safe and well. Another blooming balloon. I'm fed up with finding these, to be honest. I seem to find far too many balloons about. They're not good for the environment. Really bad for livestock. So yeah, if you're having a party, please throw away your balloons. Don't let them wander out into the countryside because yeah, they're pretty bad for the environment. Dad's just moved the combine out of the way in this shed. We've got some wheat at the bottom here that we're gonna put through the dryer this morning. Not to dry it, we're not gonna have the burner going, just to clean it up a little bit, but it's also an excuse to check the dryer and all the elevators, everything's running right, ready for harvest. Parking it up in the new combine shed. running we're on fill function we haven't got the burner on because like i said we're not drying we're just running it through to clean it we've got the pre-cleaner on there as well as all the elevators we've got our man ray here today he was our lorry driver as you know we got rid of the lorry a couple of months ago ray is now here as of today working full time on the farm with us right now he's just filling up the hopper with wheat once it's full we'll get wheat coming back down the returns and back out into the hopper here and at that point we can switch it over to discharge and we can be letting the wheat out into the shed as we uh, fill up the rest of the wheat into the harbour. Open this gate, I've dropped the padlock. Oh, where's it gone? There it is. We got it. So I'm gonna go back and get the tractor now and come in here and top a bit of this margin. This is one of the fields that we left set aside. This will be cultivated soon, ready for drilling after harvest. So yeah, I'm gonna get the new Holland and uh, yeah, just go around the margin a couple of times with the topper. <laughs> I think I'll only go the one time round up against the field edge, just leaves it a bit tidier for when we come in and cultivate. I'll leave a bit against the hedge for the wildlife, leave that for the rest of the summer. Just had a phone call from my cousin Will and he's just told me some very exciting news but I can't share it just yet and I really want to, I really want to, something awesome might be happening soon involving both of us and yeah I really really wish I could tell you what it is but I can't right now all in good time though tell you what this seat I think it needs a bit of oil it's a bit squeaky so yeah just one time round then I'll go back to the yard 
got to uh, do a bit of washing under the bonnet near the rad and the fan. It's gone all gunky and horrible from where um, we've been topping. I don't quite know what it is, just a horrible build of the stuff. Get that washed off, and then I think I'll be putting on the chisel plow, ready for uh, a bit of cultivation. Be good to uh, get this tractor out of the field, put it to work. Oh, I really wish I could tell you the news. It's going to be good. Let's get the aircon going. It's almost as good as a 7710 aircon. Almost. Speaking of the old 7710 and the old Ford tractors, as you know, we used to run a whole big fleet of Ford tractors. Over the weekend, my cousin Steve sent me a load of photos. He used to work um, for Dad back in the day. He now farms independently. But he sent me some photos over the weekend of a few of our old Ford tractors. Um, sort of from the sort of mid to late 80s these photos were from. And yeah, it was great fun looking through them over the weekend. I did put a few on my Instagram page. So for those of you who want to see, you can uh, go to my Instagram page. I'll put a uh, thing on the uh, screen there so you know what to look for. But yeah, it was a uh, great city of Fords. I uh, wish there was more photos. Maybe we'll find some more. I don't know. I know a lot of you guys have been asking for me to find some. But yeah, there are some now on my Instagram. There was uh, one of the old TW35s, the 20, without the Terratires on, back on its original wheels. There was 7810, two 7810s, because there was a Silver Jubilee edition. Uh, there was a 6610, which was out turning hay. So yeah, go and uh, check those out if you're interested. But yeah, we used to run a whole fleet of them. And away, I kind of wish we still did. Can't beat a Ford. So we've still got the issue with the indicators on this track, which you saw in my last video. So we've still got that to sort out. And now I think there's another issue. And that's the squeaky seat. It's horrible. So yeah, just here, where the fan is, you can see on the fan, there's loads of stuff built up and all down here. Just gonna give that a bit of a quick wash out. the week's been put through now, Ray's been cracking on with that. We've got it dropping out every 30 seconds. Uh, yeah, 30 seconds. From memory, it drops out about 450 kilos in time, so just under half a ton. We've got the low level override on, because when we're emptying the, uh, the dryer, it's, uh, if you haven't got the low level override on, the siren will sound, because obviously the level's dropping, it's just a warning. But obviously, when we're emptying the dryer, that's exactly what we want to do. We want to get it all through. So low level override is on. I think Ray is now stacking the wheat down the other side of the shed. So this is the bay where the wheat comes out. And what we've done is we've killed two birds with one stone. We've freshened up the wheat and we've made sure the dryer is running okay, which it seems to be. It was just about to drop one, but it, uh, it hesitated. So that means we're pretty much empty now. We've just got to get that last bit swept up into the bucket and get that through the dryer and then that is it done. And if you look here, this is all the chaff and stuff that is blown out, so it's done a good job. Brian, our man Brian, he's uh, topping 
Isn't he, Dad? He's topping, yes. In my yes, tractor. Yeah. <laughs> Cuts our hedges, but today he's on the 7-7 on the and the old topper. The old, he uh, is, yeah. Topper. Well, he's topping, <laughs> he's topping, because he's been sprayed off. He's just tidying it up a little bit, isn't he? He's just tidying it up for the cultivator. The way we're cultivating, your chisel plow, and then the seven leg, because it's going in afterwards. Yeah. I think uh, it's just uh, tidying up the stuff, the old straw, it's just, just, just tidying up. Right, we're going to get the chisel plough on, give it a go. It's going to make a start tomorrow, but why not? Let's give it a go this afternoon. Let's hope that Dad's bodge ups these two tines, let's hope they hold. Precision drive. Precision drive, then go on then. Yeah, you got it. You want the, uh, this seat, don't you? There you go. I'll see what draft you can Yeah, I'm going to get the draft. Set right, don't we? Yeah, it is a bit rigid. Um, Position of draw centre dog one, big one. Well, I haven't got that yet, big one now. Big one to what? Determines the sensitivity of the system. Yeah. Set the knob to the mid position. Mid position, yeah. Yeah, before entering the field. Yeah. Drive the track to the field and lower the into the work by moving the position control lever three, which is big one. That one, yeah. Uh, forward. Use the position control lever to set the maximum depth and to prevent Dive. diving when there is a right side of encounter. Okay. Set the required lever work depth by rotating the draft and then four, which is um, that one. That one. Observe the input as it pulls through the soil and adjust the draft sensitivity knob. That's a big word. More movement, but it's not quite. Adjust the sensitivity knob one. That's a big one. Yeah. Until the tendency to raise or lower due to variation soil. Is satisfactory. Once set, the hydraulics is automatically adjust. Try it one more another way, then, to make it worse. Draft is working. Yeah. Are you right? Yeah. Yeah. Look. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Head down there. Yeah. I think we've got the draft sorted now. It seems to be pulling it better. Oh. I'll tell you what. This, this chisel plow isn't too big for this tractor. It's pulling it well. The draft light is flashing and I can see a little bit of movement but it's still putting it through the soil smoothly. Yeah. I think we've got it now. Now all I've got to do is keep a straight line. Maybe you could drive alongside me in a minute, see if the machine's yeah, level. Yeah, yeah. Oh look, there's a guide. Yeah. Got it on the film. Got it on the film, yeah. I wonder how those tyres will hold out. The ones you did. The two side these together. They haven't broken yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> as soon as you start moving soil, look, there's two more kites here. We're going to take off, look. Basically. Yeah. What a sign. Dad's just checking the level. It's much easier to see if the uh, chisel plow's level from the outside. Well, we're finding some soil at least. I think we got there with the draft control settings. Obviously the TM, it's all new to me and dad, so just took a few minutes then to get it set up right. But it seems to be doing a good job now. Really pleased to be out with the TM, giving it a bit of a test, seeing what it's like out in the field. And yeah, it seems to be uh, doing a good job with this chisel plow, putting it well. So yeah, this will uh, be me for the rest of the day then. Can't complain, nice job to do.